It is time to welcome our tech expert. Good evening, Tom. Tom, it, it, some big news for uh, for people who are thinking about uh, starting up their own uh, website and getting their own domain name. There's some some news on the horizon. Well, it's actually I, I'm going to go out. I'm going to put it out. That it's even bigger than that, actually, okay. Robbie. Right. I mean, reading about it. I mean, it started with GoDaddy, one of the biggest suppliers of website hosting and domain names in America. Uh, their default one is to offer you a .com address. Now, this week they started offering .co addresses in America, which is a first. They offer that as the preferred or default position. Now, they only did it for a day. They said it was a test. It was interesting to see that that's happening because everybody associates companies, companyname.com, right? That's the first thing you tend to think about when you think about web addresses. Yes. But it really doesn't serve the purposes we need moving forward. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, there's about 90 million odd, dot, uh, yeah, 90 million dot com addresses, and you know, there, there's a lot of clutter and mess in amongst it. And what we actually, what what we're moving to, and this is coming through ICANN, which is the International Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. Okay. That much so, I know. so, so this is this, this is the organisation that uh, run is, the web. Yeah, they run it. All right. <laughs> they run the internet. Right. Okay. But anyway, the new to- um, to- uh, to- new type of what we call top level domains, which are the the, the highest level domains, .com.au, um, .net, .org, mm. are, are, .gov. Are, are these more expensive? Um, look, not much. I mean, the difference is pretty marginal. Right. You know, I, I mean, I've got a .org address, and I think it cost me $7 well, wow. okay. to register. Yeah, even I but, can afford that. Yeah, exactly. But a .org address is silly. I mean, I've got, you know, thomasr.org, which is my home website and where I keep all my, all my stuff. But really, it's not a good representation of who I am because a .org is supposed to be an organisation. I got it because it was kind of cheap and available. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... Um, what, what we're moving to is a new type of, of top-level domains that will actually be more expressive about what it is that domain represents. So, for example, you could have .abc would be a really good example of that. Imagine we get a top-level domain called .abc. Mm. Sure. Now, what, okay. what about, so that would mean you could have radio.abc. Now, when you go to radio.abc, what are you going to be landing on? You know straight away what that represents. Now, to get to your, for example, if we were to listen to the streaming tonight on the ABC with you, yes. we'd have to go to www. Um, abc.net.au slash sydney and yeah. then follow the links through to the streaming you know, service. Yeah. Now, what about if we had streaming.abc and you go to that and you'd be like, where, where are you from? New South Wales, boom, done. Right. Straight away. Just like playing. that. Yeah. So it'll be a way to not only give you top-level yeah. domain, so you could have a company name. Um, for example, some of the brands will have one. Telstra will, for example, will, will more than likely get .telstra. Okay. So, so they have mobiles. Uh, dot Telstra. It's, so it's a really it, simple way to work it is out. Is there going to be a near infinite number of uh, of domain names then? I mean, are they are they going to allow? They're not going to allow an enormous amount of top what they call the top level domains. Um, now this is, I mind you, this is all subject to a meeting in Columbia in December, um, and then there'll be a, a four month campaign, and then there'll be a forty five day window open, um, start on the May thirtieth of two thousand and eleven, and they're they're probably going to see around five hundred top level domains introduced. Mm-hmm. Now, you could have ones based on cities. So you could have Sydney, for example. Dot Sydney would be a really good one. So you could have um, Opera House. Dot Sydney. You could have your business name. Dot Sydney, because you're in Sydney. It's a really good representation of where you are. But you might have that as, an, as a part of a library of domains mm. that you'd own purely because they'll offer... Now, keep in mind, when you do a search for something, one of the most important elements of search, now, Google doesn't tell us exactly how search works, is actually the domain as well. So, if the domain name matches, so if I go to robbiebuck.com mm. um, and then I do a search for so Robbie Buck, you, you you'll code in a higher result. Somebody else has got it already. They've already, they've already bagged it. Really? Yeah. Mm. See? Yeah. There's another good one. Robbiebuck.name would be the one you might go for I, because there, it's a good, rep- is, good, is good there, match to you. Is there some resistance to this, though, that... Uh, from, from people going, well, I, I like the fact that there were only a few because it, it made it it made it easier. As soon as you open up the floodgates to all these different names, suddenly the web becomes even more complex than it was. Well, that also reflects the increasing complexity. Uh, I mean, if you're looking at, you know, um, the the number the types of businesses online and the, the size of company websites. If you went when the first domain names were sort of registered or put out there, companies had a two page website. It was a hi, welcome to our website. Click here to read uh, how to contact us. Mm. Now you look at them doing mini sites, micro campaigns. You know, uh, you look at a big manufacturer or or a, a big brand like a Nike or an Adidas or one of those sort of. They might, they have massive websites and they have campaigns going on all over the place. And really ordering that in a really simple and easy to understand way for them is difficult and for consumers it's even harder. So being able to have the, you know, shoes dot your company name or, you know, golf dot company name, mm. you'd go much easier to find. And, they, and it'll also be easier for advertising. Oh, I mean, right. if you, you saw a bus drive past and it had, you know, um, a sport at company name, 
you go, whoop, I can look that up without it having no effort at all to look that up when yeah. I get home. Mm. So it, it, that, that's one key element. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, is, is, has this been spawned by a particular need? Is there a, I mean, is there a call from, is it businesses or is there a sense that, that, that there are so many things online I, now? I think, I think ICANN is doing the sensible thing and looking to the future. And right. in the same way that all, anybody who works in, 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 um, you know, in IT or the tech field needs to look beyond the next two years and look five, 10, 15, 20 years. And I think ICANN are taking that longer view because that's the necessary thing here, Robbie. You know, we're looking at Australia's been online in a big way for 15 years and now we're in the situation where, you know, what does .com.au really mean? It means commercial company based in Australia. Well, is bhp.com.au or should they be bhp.miner or, or should they be mining.bhp, um, you know, offshore operations, uh, you know, uh, gas operations.bhp? Uh, mm. That will be the, the question that companies will ask about how they operate and the domains will flow from that, which is actually a good thing. Now, the last thing I wanted to add to it, though, is one of the other, other great ones is for companies that, countries that use non-Latin characters. So um, Arabic is a good example. They've previously been locked out of ICANN. Not locked out, but they haven't been able to register domains. Um, and Chinese characters and similar, although some Chinese characters can be used as domains, you'll be able to have domain names based around non-Latin characters, which right. is useful for the non-English speaking or non-Latin-based um, countries. You know, it, Turkey's it, a good example of one that does use Latin-based, but then, you, as I said, you go to Arabic and you're in a whole world of trouble. Okay, so when, when are we likely to see this? I mean, when, when May next year. Right. May next year. I, 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 and, and this is pending the meeting that's about to happen. Yeah, and look, I, I, I don't know what, what will happen at that meeting, but I do know that they know, they know there is a need to um, move forward in this, and so what, what you'll find is that will go through, and then not long in that 45-day period, um, Australians will have the opportunity to register with their provider, so whoever's providing you with your website mm. or providing you with your domain name, and then that goes on to Oz Registry, who are the company that hold all those domains in Australia. And, um, yeah, so it'll, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of it. There, a, lot, a lot of this is speculation, but I think a lot of it will come true, and it'll be, it'll be really good, I think. Okay. Tom Reynolds, our tech expert. Coming up next, uh, we'll be talking about...